Shalom and greetings in the name of Yahweh. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, singular tense, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Ladies of the United States and other nations that might be tuning in, this broadcast is dedicated to us. I teach, but I learn, and I am kept in remembrance by teaching his word. Let's um, go to Titus 2 and 3. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Holiness, set apartness, set apart from what? The distractions and the cares of this life, abiding in obedience in Yahweh's word. That they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, teach them to hold to their duty, teach them to love their husbands, to love their children. A husband has often said, isn't it a shame that a woman has to be taught how to love her children and how to love her husband? But if you stop and think, the theme, the world theme, is basically every man for himself. It's all about self, I, and me. Selfishness. It's no, is it no wonder that the young women need to be taught to love themselves less and to love their husbands and love their children. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Elohim be not blasphemed. So what are we going to talk about today, tonight, whatever time you're listening to this broadcast? Let's talk about good things. The aged women, that would be me. Let's be a teacher of good things. And I'd like to talk about the old paths. We read the verse in Jeremiah so many times, 6 and 16, about the old paths. But the first place you find about a path, or paths, plural, is in Isaiah 58 and 12. It says, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Now, let's examine this word path. This word path is not like you think. In some respects, uh, if you've ever been down a path that has been well trodden, there's no grass on it. All right, you can look at a broad way where a vehicle can go through, but a path is only a place for a set of feet, sometimes two sets of feet. Which brings me to Jeremiah 6 and 16, and I want to examine some words with this and share with you an experience I had. Jeremiah 6 and 16, thus saith Yahweh, for you that are tuning in for the first time, I am reading from a King James Version. However, everywhere I see uppercase L-O-R-D, uppercase G-O-D, and the errors of Jehovah and Jesus, I will properly put back into Yahweh's word his name that humans have removed. So again, thus saith uppercase L-O-R-D should read, thus saith Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls but they said we will not 
walk therein. Okay, I want to examine this verse, examine some of the words in this verse. All right, we see, thus saith Yahweh, stand, stand ye in the ways. This word stand is the Hebrew root word amad. And this word stand means to remain or endure or to take one's stand. Continue to remain in. Now remember, this word endure, when you're referring to stand ye in the ways, Remember the verse that says, he that endureth unto the end shall be saved? A lot of people claim salvation. Everybody's saved. Everybody's going to heaven. How do you know? <laughs> we got some enduring to do. He that endures unto the end, whatever our end might be, shall be saved. So stand, endure, remain in the ways. What is this word ways? It's the Hebrew root word derek. And it means a road. It can be a way. It can be a journey. Or it can be a path. Thus saith Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see, consider, have a vision of, regard, observe. Okay, he says stand, endure, in the ways, in this road, or whatever it is, and see, observe, and then ask. Ask for the old path. Ask for the long duration path. This word old goes back to the Hebrew root word olam, which means long duration, antiquity, forever, and everlasting, a perpetual, ancient, long time, continuous existence. Ask, inquire of, seek after the old paths. Now this path is different. This path is trodden with feet. And it's the Hebrew root word nativ. Okay, nativ. And this path is trodden with feet, with feet, I can't speak plain, not a vehicle. This is a pathway for a traveler, a human to walk. Where is the good way, the agreeable way, the pleasant way, the pleasant to direct, and walk therein. This word walk not just means to trod with your feet, it can mean to die in, to live after the manner of life in, to cause to walk, to follow, walk therein. And ye shall find, ye shall secure, ye shall meet, ye shall encounter rest for your souls for every part of your being. You shall find rest for your souls if you choose and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? But they said, we will not walk therein. Now isn't that sad? The ones that don't want to walk in the old path shall not find rest for their souls. Now that's sad. That's a very sad tale. Path. You know, there are different kinds of paths, and I want to share a story with you. I had a visitation many years ago that uh, another woman was walking this path with me, she was my prayer partner. She was a good friend. She was a good sister in Yahweh. And we had left a Broadway, and we were on a path that was, okay, now there are different kinds of paths. There are paths where there is no grass. It's just dirt. You might see grass on either side. And then there are paths that are a little bit grassy because not many people go down that path. 
So this sister and I had left a Broadway, and we were on a path that was dirt with grass on either side that maybe two sets of feet can walk upon, and we were walking side by side. But the path got narrower. This path that got narrower went to the right. And I was walking down this path to the right, and I turned to the sister that was on the top hill, and, she, and I said, come on, I called her by name. I've been down this way before. And as I looked at her, she was dressed in a half white garment. And the bottom of her garment was dark, but the top half was white. She had gone so far in her walk. And I said, come on, and I called her by name. I said, I've been down this way before, that narrow path with grass. And she said, no, I am afraid. And I came out of my visitation, and I was grieved in my spirit for this sister. Now, what I want to share with you women is this. As we age in the spirit, we will re be, be required to be less of me and more of Yahweh's word, less of our desires and more of Yahweh's desires for us, which will crucify, mortify the deeds of our flesh. Okay, less of our desires, less of our carnality, putting on more of him. I hear women say through the years, oh, I want to be so close to what they call God. And even those who know that Yahweh is indeed their Elohim and Mashiach, I want to be close to him. But how much of your fleshly desires are you willing to put off? How much are you willing to sacrifice what comes in your ear gate, in your eye gate, within your spirit, within your daily walk? How much of you or me are we willing to get rid of to be clothed with what Yahweh would desire within us? In other words, We've come off the Broadway, and we're a baby, and Yahweh carries us. And as we age in the spirit, the path gets narrower, and more is required of us. And then, at the end, as the end closes upon us, and we're in it, ladies, we are in the end just about the end of the end we're looking for that seven year period and it's right around the corner where are we in our walk we are going to be required all if we are going to be like mashiach we are going to be required all to abide in this path where only one set of feet may walk at a time and are we willing to pay the price to rip more of me out and clothe ourselves with more of him? Or will we be like that sister and wear the half white garment instead of being clothed in the full white robe that Yahweh desires for us to wear? The choice is up to us. Yahweh does not desire robot service. He gives us a free will to choose. A broad way, a narrower way, and even a more narrow way. Wow. That's a lot. Again, thus saith Yahweh, stand. Endure in the ways, and see, observe, and ask, inquire, seek after for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest 
for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. And this is the answer for the majority of this world's women. We don't have to do that anymore. We can dress any way we want. We can cut our hair. We can trim our hair. We can let the rats chew it off. You think that's funny? There was a woman that said that. She actually said that the rats chewed off her hair. As my name is Kathy Kirk, that's what she said. We can dress any way we want. We can take on the posture of a man. We can take on the attitude of rebellion in rebelling against our husbands. Or we can submit and our husbands have the last say so. And sometimes that's just tough. It's hard. It's tight, but it's right, this preacher used to say. It's never easy. Let me tell you something, ladies. You will never find a place, okay, in the 40 years nearly that I've had the Holy Spirit, uh, 20 years knowing who Yahweh is, I have never found a place where I have arrived. <laughs> Abba sees to it that I get plenty of practice in abiding with obedience, in obedience to keep me on the narrow path. The narrow path. And we stay after it. We make our flesh do the right thing, whether we feel like it or not. And we keep our heart, our spirit, our attitude under the blood of Yahweh. We make our flesh do the right thing. We make our flesh obey our husband when we don't feel like it. We make our flesh obey our number one husband, Yahweh's word, that tells us to obey our husband. We obey Yahweh's word to be a keeper at home. We obey Yahweh's word to uh, abide in our call of duty, to hold to our duty. That's what sober-minded means. We abide in that path where only one set of feet trod. We cannot afford to be sidetracked. Let's go on here a little bit and read something else. Psalm 16 and 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. This path, this is a different word, path. It's the word a rock. And it means a race. Thou wilt show me the race of life, the way of life, a path of life. A, pass, a way of living this life in thy presence is fullness of joy. You know, this life that we live has lots of different pleasures. Why should we have pleasure for a season when we can have joy in the Holy Spirit? Psalms 27 and 11. Teach me thy way, O Yahweh, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Teach me thy way. Teach me your, instruct me with your word. Teach me thy way, O Yahweh, and lead me in a plain path. What's a plain path? It's not what you think. It's not what I think. We don't tear out this word, well, I don't believe that, and tear out that part of the Bible, and we don't believe that. We make Yahweh's word multiple choice. We can't do that. Lead me in a plain path. Lead me in a righteous path. Lead me in a straight path. Lead me in a level place, a place of, un of righteousness, of uprightness. This is a plain path. Lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. For Yahweh's name's sake, the road gets narrower when you find that your God's name was never anything but Yahweh. And just because you know your God Messiah's name is Yahweh doesn't mean you have arrived yet either. Because again, the word says, he, or for us she, that endureth unto the end shall be saved. There's some enduring that goes on with this. Psalms 119 and 35. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. 
I see a lot of women posting the Ten Commandments in their yard, in their house, and they don't even know what the name of their God is. They don't even know how to obey the, the, the word. They leave out the fourth commandment and the Sabbath day. They leave out, you shall have no other gods but me. Who's the me? Yahweh. They think their God is some other name. They take on the doctrine of Jezebel, antinomianism, and they believe that they can serve the God of their choice. Well, he knows who I'm talking about. He has many names. Ladies, there is no chapter and verse that God is called many names. He has many attributes, yes, but the word name is in the singular tense from cover to cover. Proverbs 4 and 26. No, let me back up. Psalms 119 and 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There's that word path again, that narrow way, the less traveled way. Now, Proverbs 4 and 26. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. The basic Bible in English reads, keep a watch on your behavior and let all your ways be rightly ordered. Wow. This brings us to Matthew. Matthew in chapter 7. Because as we walk in this narrow path, the enemy is going to send false prophets false teachers in our way to try to get us off that path and this is what matthew says 7 13 starting with verse 17 uh, excuse me 7 and 13 says enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that way is path which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. The next verse is a continued thought. While you're on the path, he's giving instructions which start in verse 15. Beware of false prophets, or might I interject, I'm not adding to the word of Yahweh, but there are prophetesses out there who, well, Jezebel called herself a prophetess, Yahweh didn't. So beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? In other words, you're going to know them by their fruit. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Every, okay, wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. So ladies, you that claim the real Holy Spirit, the true Holy Spirit of Yahweh, while you're walking on this path, Watch out for false teachers, for false prophets that will distract you and water down the word. You'll know them by their fruit. Do you know that a fruit is an outward adornment of a tree? It sure is. My husband can tell you that when you can walk into an assembly, a church, you can look at the women and see what they look like to see who's obeying the word. Yep. Are you judging me? <laughs> That's what I hear all the time. Oh, you're judging me. Well, the word makes me a fruit inspector. I know a tree by its bark. I know a tree by its leaves. And we know what fruit it bears. Outward adornment. Yes. That tree has an outward adornment. And we know if that fruit is good or if it's bad. And if women are dressing like men, appearing as men, cutting off their long locks of hair, dressing like a harlot, and bend over and you can see mountains and valleys at both ends, then something's wrong. Something is wrong. And someone has never found, either never found, the strict and straight and narrow path, 
or they've been told by the false teachers that, oh, it's okay. You can dress any way you want. You can act any way you want. You can take the posture in your home as a man. You can have the last word in your household against your husband. You can do a lot of things. You can do anything. Abba doesn't want robot service, does he? He requires obedience that keeps us in the straight and the narrow path. Yes, ladies, if you've got the real Holy Spirit, you're going to know them by their fruit. We are fruit inspectors. Are you judging me? <laughs> well, if you remain with bad fruit, you will go to hell. But if you repent, you'll go to heaven. <laughs> there's a real hell. There's a real place of comfort and there's a real place of torment. Nobody teaches that anymore, do they? Mom, what are you teaching your children? We will know a tree by its fruit as we're walking the path, the narrow path, the path that teaches us to abide in the strict and the straight and the narrow way and not to be distracted with false teachers that tell you it's okay to give in to your flesh. It's okay to retain a bad spirit. It's okay. <laughs> it's not okay. Yahweh's word teaches strict straight, holy living by his women, obedient to their own husbands, not their own evangelist or their own pastor, unless your husband just tells you to do something out of the word. If your husband tells you to do something out of the word, then with scripture, we answer our husband, I'm sorry, but uh, for example, if he tells you to look at something that's wicked, you shall set no wicked thing before your eyes. So you stay with the word. We don't look for excuses to disobey our husbands. If you've got a problem, you, can, you have a higher authority. You have a daddy in heaven, your first husband, your first love that you can take your petitions to if you think your husband is wrong. And believe me, he will answer you if you abide in his righteousness and keep your spirit, keep our attitude right. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto Yahweh. Then we resist the devil, and he flees from us. Many people want to quote the last part, but they miss the first part. If you want to know why the only name of your God, Mashiach, is Yahweh, please write to Jerry or Kathy. We mail out free audio CDs and free scriptural literature on why your God and Mashiach is only named Yahweh. Again, please write to Jerry or Kathy. Our mailing address is 775 McDonald Road. Again, 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia. Covington, Georgia. That's the United States of America, Georgia. Our zip code is 30014. Again, 30014. Or we invite you to call us at 770 Seven eight four zero seven zero three. That number again is seven seven zero seven eight four zero seven zero three. We invite you to visit our lovely website. You may re-listen to our radio programming and watch my husband on my husband's televised broadcast teaching from the King James Version using the Hebrew scriptures on how our God's name Yahweh has been removed from his word and replaced with titles uppercase L-O-R-D uppercase G-O-D and the errors of Jehovah and Jesus so go to our website it is www.yahweh you must spell Yahweh Y-A-H W-A-H with a little hyphen after that if you don't put the hyphen you'll miss it so it's Yahweh Y-A-H W-A-H with a little hyphen ministries dot O-R-G again one more time Yahweh hyphen ministries dot o-r-g and watch all of my husband's televised broadcasts re-listen to our radio programming and we have lots more available for you to search out from the scripture ladies the purpose of my broadcast is to provoke you to study that's what's wrong with people now. We follow humans instead of digging out the word, getting on our face in intercessory prayer, and searching the word out for ourselves. 
Traditions have been passed down. Erroneous errors have been passed down. And we've got to get back to the strict, straight path of truth. Until next week at the same time, may Yahweh honestly encourage you women to seek him while he might be found. Shalom.